Writing good tests can be a challenge, and writing reliable UI tests, it's substantially more difficult. User interfaces are asynchronous, driven by events, transitions, and data loaded from background threads. Coding around that without any help from a UI testing framework would require a lot of boilerplate and handling of edge cases. On the other hand, say I give you a phone with a sample app and tell you to test a feature of the app that I just implemented. For example, please make sure that saving a new note in my note-taking app works. What would you do? Well, I'm pretty sure that you would look for the Save button. Once you've found it, you tap on it, and then check if the note is present in the list of saved notes. That's actually a pretty good scenario for a UI test, and it's simple to understand for a person. But how would we go about expressing it in code? The Espresso framework was created specifically for this purpose, to enable developers to write UI tests that are concise, reliable, and using a fluent API. And most importantly, Espresso takes care of synchronization with any UI events, so that in most cases, you don't have to worry about any view state transitions and implementation details. Looking back at the simple UI test we just defined, we can see that the basic flow when using Espresso is exactly the same as in our real life scenario. First, find a view using some matching rules, then perform an action on it, and finally, verify the resulting state. Before I go any further and start writing actual test code, let's make sure that the Android test runner and Espresso dependencies are configured in build.gradle. I'll add the dependencies and set up the runner here. If you're using a version of Android Studio that lets you select the test artifact, remember to switch to Android instrumentation tests under build variants. I'm using Android Studio 2.0, which has a combined view for both local and instrumentation tests, so I can already see both in my project view. Instrumentation tests go under the Android test source set, so I'll create a sample test class here and name it Notes Screen Test. I have to add an annotation on the test class to specify that I'll be writing JUnit 4 tests and running them with the Android JUnit 4 runner. The Notes screen in our app is contained in the Notes activity. By adding an activity test rule, I'm telling the runner to launch the activity before any tests and tear it down after they finish. All this is taken care of with this line. Now I'll add a new method with a descriptive name for the actual test and start with the basic structure I explained before. Notice that onView is actually a method on the Espresso class, but across my testing code I will use static imports to be able to express the tests in a more concise way. All right, let's go through the arguments next. We need a matcher in order to find a view in the current view hierarchy. Espresso comes with a set of built-in matchers for common view properties like with ID, with text, is checked, and many others. We provide a simple cheat sheet so you don't have to go digging through the documentation every time. In my case, I want to locate the floating action button, which fortunately is the only item on the screen with the ID fab at notes. Now that I've isolated the view that I need using matchers, it's time to apply a view action, or in other words, a user interaction that will be simulated by Espresso. I just want to click the fab, but again, there are many more built-in actions like typing and even finger swipes that I can use to interact with views. And finally, I verified the outcome of my actions by using a view assertion. Since I want to check if an input field is shown on screen after pressing the fab, I'll move this block of code here, and I'll use the matches assertion that accepts a view matcher. So to summarize what we have so far, the first statement matches a floating action button and clicks it, which should bring up the add note screen. The second statement finds the edit text that lets a user enter a note title and verifies that it is displayed using the matches view assertion. Notice that I didn't have to write any code in between to wait for previous events to finish, as Espresso already takes care of that for me. To run the test, I right click on the test class and select run. Because it's an instrumentation test, it requires an emulator or physical device. I can see the actions on the screen as they execute. Here's a slightly longer test that includes typing into the add note screen and saving a note, all using Espresso. Unless you're writing end-to-end -end tests, you should keep your tests small and scoped, which will make them more reliable. If you want to practice adding and running UI tests on your own, I suggest you check out our Android testing code lab, which I based this video on. It contains a downloadable project and step-by-step -step instructions to get you started. 
Join me for the next episode of Android Testing Patterns to learn how to handle adapter views in your tests. Good luck and happy testing.